Ave Satanus, Ave Lucifera, Ave Great Lord Belial, Ave Great Lord Leviathan, Ave Beautiful Queen Lilith, the True Queen of the Night and the True Mother of All Demons, Ave Lord Behelbagor, Ave Lord Le Ave King Asmodeus, my great patron demon, Ave King Asmode, Ave Lord Vereen, Ave Lord Volok, Ave Queen Astaroth, Ave Queen Tiamath, Ave King Azazel, Ave Lord of Maimon, Ave Lord of Mon, Ave King Asmode, Ave Lord Croxel, Ave Princess Dagon, Ave Princess Sunny Lion, Ave and Hail to every demon and every demoness that's in existence. And Ave and Hail to every one of my true, sinister, 666% brothers and sisters. Hail Satan, guys. Hail Father Satan. Excuse me for a sec there. I'm just going to turn my... I'm just going to turn my light on for this one. Hail Lord Satan. Ave Lord Satan. Yeah, I, uh... I want to give a couple little shout-outs first. Before I get going. Obviously, Michael, my great good brother, really good brother and friend. I consider him a friend. Uh, Michael Heisen. Uh, Volvin. My sister Volvin. And her husband, John. I've been friends with them. Man. I'd say since probably 2005. Maybe 2000. Yeah, probably 2005, 2006. Somewhere around there. And I knew the both of them. Before they, I knew the both of them before they even knew each other. Now, two of them have been married a long time now. Well, not, you know, a few year, years. And, you know, I'm still friends with both of them. And I'm hoping that it will always continue. There's no reason for it not to. I think the world of both of them, of Valvin and her husband, John. And they both are very intelligent. And they both are very, very true, sinister, 666%, as my sister Holly says, and my sister Loki says, 666% true Father Satan's children. And I'm not joking when I say that. I'm dead serious, because they really are truly Father Satan's demonic, and Queen Lilith's, and all the demonics, King Asmodei, King Asmodeus, are true they are true Satanists no question in my mind they are true devil worshippers just like I am and just like every true Satanist that there is we can consider we can put titles on it like traditional Satanists spiritual Satanists uh, necromancy demonolatry you know we can put titles on it not a problem right but we can put all the titles on it we want. But in all reality, when it comes back down to it, it's devil worship. And it really is. All bo and if you consider it, say it ain't, or consider it not being devil worship, and you worship, if you're a demon altar or a demon altress, you obviously worship demons, right? If you are a Satanist, and you consider yourself a theistic Satanist, or a spiritual Satanist, or traditional Satanist. Either way you look at it, you're still a devil worshipper, okay? You know, I know a lot of people probably won't, won't agree with this. And that's their choice too, right? Because everybody has their freedom of choice, you know. Supposed to anyway. But that being said, a lot of people... Just use the titles, and if you say they don't like using the word devil worship, okay, or demon worship, but if you're if you're a true sadistic, in all honesty, if you're true to Father Satan, true to King Lucifer, all true to all of the the demonic, 
you are, a, you know, I hate to break it to you, but yeah, you are a devil worshiper. Whether you want to admit it or not is another thing. But me personally, I have no problem admitting it. You know, I got no problem wearing my pentagrams. Wearing my amulets. You know, no problem at all. And I wear them with pride. And I have no problem with that. I got my patron demon, King Asmodeus. Great King Asmodeus. I have a tattoo of his sigil on the back of my on the back of my head, right here, right dead center in the back of my dome, right here. And it will obviously it will always be there until the day I die. Suppose I die tonight in my sleep, or suppose I live to be a hundred. It's still going to be there. No question about that. But what I find what I find I notice too that. A lot of people that are Satanists, or use the term Satanists, I'll say that, uh, they think that if they just, like, when it comes to rituals, okay, this is my take on it, okay, you have to do, obviously you have to do your you know, incense, you have to have your incense, you have to have your, whichever, it depends on whichever kind of ritual you're doing. If you're indoors, say you got your altar indoors, or you have your, you know, your place where you do your, your rituals and that, that obviously, if, if it's indoors, uh, you, you should, I'm not going to say have to, because that would be like, no, that's, that's just wrong to say you have to. It's obviously up to each individual who's doing the rituals, and what kind of rituals they're doing. But, the thing is, you have to know which demon that you're doing the rituals to. Like, if you're planning on doing a ritual, say, to King Asmodeus, alright? You have to know, as much as you can know, about that demonic entity before you do your ritual. You really do. I'm not joking. Like, or Well, you don't really have to, but, you know, you might just say the wrong thing or, or do the wrong thing. You don't know, right? Unless you, unless you study that demon or an entity or, you know, ancient god as I prefer to call them, you have to... Excuse me for a sec there. You have to learn as much as you can about that demonic entity or ancient god. And if you do, like, you really do in all honesty. I'm not joking. I'm being serious. I don't joke in any of my videos. I'm serious about them all. And that being said, yeah, you have to, you have to learn as much as you can about whichever de ancient god you're working with. Like, if you're planning on working with, like I said, King Asmodeus, okay? You have to learn as much as you can about King Asmodeus. And I'm, I mean as much as you can. Like you have to learn his likes, his dislikes. You have to learn his... You have to learn what kind of incense he likes or chooses, right? You have to learn, you know, a lot of people say candles. What color candles do you like? But usually with me, the way I do it is I just use a black and red candle. That's usually the candles I use all the time are black and red. You know, I have blue candles. I have lots of white candles. You know, I have I have mine hand. But me personally, I just choose to use black and red candles. But in reality, I don't really think it matters what color candle you have or what color candle you use be it a white candle even if it's a little tea light man it doesn't really matter in my opinion but I, I just choose to use red and black candles right but that being said I also think that we have to or we should by race if we're doing rituals say like I said to King Asmodeus we should learn as much as possible 
about King Asmodeus before we do our ritual to him. Like, learn what kind of incense he likes. Okay? Because it's, it's you're inviting, you think about it, you're inviting an ancient god into your into your ritual space or your ritual room or what have you you're inviting an ancient god in the into your space and you gotta remember how far that you know that ancient god probably he could be you know king asmodeus could be anywhere when you're doing your ritual and your or your evocation or invocation which at what it whichever it is right and you should have to in my honest opinion you should at least try to uh, do try to show as much respect as humanly possible you should do that anyway to all, any any ancient god I don't care which ancient god it is you know you should show full respect like total respect and I don't like using the terms evocations or invocations I prefer like I'm big on I'm, I'm big on invitations Okay, I'm really big on invitations, and I think that I I choose to call it an Im invitation most of the time. Like if I'm doing a ritual, I invite. Obviously, I invite Father. If I'm doing a ritual, say for King Asmodeus, okay. Obviously, I have to. Obviously, I need to uh, invite him in or do an invocation or evocation. Now, King Asmodeus is a very old god, too. Like, I mean very old. He's not, you know, he didn't just sprout out yesterday. He's, and all the ancient gods, ain't. they've been around for millennials. Like, they've been around long before we were even dreamt of. Like, long before we were even created. Any humans, for that matter. They've been around. So you know they know their stuff. They know their shit, so to put, you know, so to put it. And they know stuff that we might, we will never know. We, I'd love to know it. I really would. I'd love to know every bit of information, everything that King Asmodeus could throw, I'd throw at me. I'd love to know. I really would, because he is a great demon. He is a very, he's a great demon. He's a great god, ancient god, great demon to work with. But now, don't get me wrong. I wouldn't want to get on his bad side. I can guarantee you that right now. I wouldn't want to get on any of the demonic's bad side. That's why I treat them with total respect, total loyalty, total honor. And I really do, and I'm not just saying it, I truly do. And when I do rituals, I do them with full respect. And when I go into a ritual, I go into a ritual keeping in the back of my mind that really we don't know very much about the demonic about any of the ancient gods like we learn as we go because it's a learning process you know they're the teachers we're the students you know I don't know if a lot of people look at it that way but I know a lot of I know some people for sure do we're the students, they're the teachers. There are guides, and obviously if there are guides, we show full respect to them. Or we should, I know I do. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that most people do when they do rituals. But you're going to have your young ones, like your youngsters, like, you know, 15, 16, 17, 18 year olds, that don't really know very much about the ancient gods. Okay? And they go in to do rituals, and if they hear a little noise while they're doing the ritual, okay? Now, the noise could be anything. It could be the house settling. It could be something in the pipes. You know, pipes could be in the water pipes. You know, it could be anything, right? And the first thing they do when they hear a sound is... They think right away it's, it's the ancient God communicating with them. And in some cases it is. Now don't get me wrong, it is in some cases. But in a lot of cases it's not. And they take it the wrong way. And then of course if they're not if they're not used to doing true rituals with and expecting full results or expecting results, period, 
a lot of cases times they get they get frightened they get scared and then of that, and then of course the reason why they get scared is because of all the bull crap that was brainwashed into them when they were sheeples all their life or forever however long they were and then of course that's where renunciation that comes in because really before you start doing main rituals and all that you have to do renunciation you know that's just a given you really do like all I'm not joking I'm being dead serious anybody that does any rituals like and really means it when they really mean it when they do them like are, and are very sincere about it when they're doing when they do them like be it say whether it's a satanic ritual demonic ritual you know necromantic ritual we have to be fully humble obviously we can carry a bit of pride but not enough pride to pretend that we know more about the ancient god that we're calling than they know about themselves because that's just not the way it is and it never will be you know like King Asmodeus he's been around a very long time okay and he's got a bad rap you know he he, he have he's after having a lot of shit said about him and a lot of the shit that was said about him is bullshit and I'll come right out in front and say this bullshit and I don't care who says it or who said it in the past because I know like with the Goetia and I'm going to go back to King Solomon, okay? Now, Solomon wrote that he got King Asmodeus, you know, and, and 71 more demons besides King Asmodeus and trapped them in a jar. Sealed them, trapped them in a jar until they listened to him. And then he kept them trapped in a jar afterwards. So basically what he was doing, he was basically commanding the demons, the ancient gods, telling them what to do, when to do it, how to do it. According to him. Now this is, the God, this is according to him. And that's why I like, that's why I don't, like I have a lot of books on the Guaisha, the Guaisha magic and stuff like that, which I do and I'll even show you if you think I'm lying. Where do you two? Okay, here we go. Just give me a sec there, guys. Okay? I know this video is getting long, but it's all I can do right now. Actually, I'll do another video right after, and that way it'll be a two-part one. So, I'll do another video and get back to the Guaisha part. Ave Satanus, Ave Ducifera, Ave Lord Belial, Ave Great Lord Leviathan, Ave Beautiful Queen Bullet. Ave Queen Astaroth, Ave Lord Vereen, Ave Lord Volok, and I'll talk to you in a sec, guys. Hail Satan.